Ladies and gentlemen, we could have a full-on Black Swan event happening in just the next couple of hours that could have very negative impacts to inflation, that could be very negatively impactful to the U.S. economy, but could cause the Fed to cut rates a lot sooner than what Wall Street is currently expecting. I will give you the rundown, the breaking news, and what this Black Swan event is in this video. Do me a quick favor, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. It's free 99, it costs you absolutely nothing to do so, and we keep you informed of everything you need to know here on this channel. But with that said, let's go ahead and get into this upcoming Black Swan event potential. Black Swan event. That is Iran is likely going to attack Israel soon. This turns into a Black Swan event if this does escalate into a larger conflict and the Strait of Hormuz is impacted. As I have mentioned before, the Strait of Hormuz contains about 30 to 40 percent of the world's oil supply that travels through it each and every single day. Here is an interactive chart of the Strait of Hormuz and the oil tankers and I mean, you could see there is uh, lots of activity in the Strait of Hormuz. Guess who really, quote unquote, controls the choke point of the Strait of Hormuz? Well, lo and behold, it's Iran. So considering this, if you did see a 5 to 10% reduction in the oil traffic through this strait, that would be hugely problematic for the world's oil supply. Like, there's nowhere to transport your, your oil through the desert here of Iraq, Iran, Saudi Arabia, you, you basically have to go through the Strait of Hormuz. If they had to go around to right here, this whole Red Sea, uh, that would that would be pretty problematic as well. In fact, you're already starting to see, uh, you know, the Strait of Hormuz be impacted. Iran's Revolutionary Guard seizes a container ship near the Strait of Hormuz amid tensions with Israel. This container ship is... This container ship is an Israeli container ship. So you are seeing already some small impact in the Strait of Hormuz. Biden has said he expects an Iranian strike on Israel sooner rather than later. And some pretty alarming news that just came out about two hours ago was Israel calls off school trips and puts forces on full alert amid the Iran threat. And Biden returns to the White House at short notice amid the Israel-Iran tensions. By the time you guys even see this video, it wouldn't surprise me if an attack on Israel has started by Iran. Based on intelligence that we currently have, there's about 150 medium range missiles pointed at Israel, ready to go. Odds are a lot of those will be intercepted, but the goal from Iran's perspective is to have some of them get through and to make impact. These missiles are currently targeted towards Tel Aviv. That is the capital of Israel. And if Iran does indeed follow through with this attack in which it looks like they are going to, yeah, you're going to see Israel respond. You're going to see the U.S. respond. And I find in no logical world that the Strait of Hormuz and the oil supply will continue business as usual. Well, there's a very real chance this does turn into a black swan event and next week could be very ugly for our markets. Now, there's a couple different ways to think about this because it's not even the geopolitical tensions that the markets are going to care about. Who cares who's bombing who? Markets are savage. They're ruthless. The stock market is the bloodiest, most ruthless place beyond a, besides a battlefield that you will ever see in your entire life. Markets get over geopolitical tensions. They get over bad news. Yeah, sure, they can be fearful for a little while, but they get over it. But when there's a direct impact to the most important commodity in the world, which is oil, all bets are off the table. Now, there's a couple different ways to think about this. Number one, if this conflict does have a direct impact to the Strait of Hormuz, which again, I think it has to and slow down that flow of oil at the bare minimum, let alone if there's a blockade of the whole strait, that's like a disaster, okay? That's a disaster scenario waiting to happen. But you've already seen the price of oil start to go up. You've already seen the gas at your gas pump, your local gas pump, is up a lot. I could imagine a scenario where you see a partial blockade of the Strait of Hormuz, and uh, you could see maybe the price at the gas pump hit five, six plus dollars on a national average. In fact, 
that would probably be likely at this point. And that's going to have a huge negative impact to economic activity. That is wildly negative for the economy. That's also wildly negative for inflation. Oil, just look around. Look around in your room, wherever you are at work, car, wherever you are. Look at anything you have around you. Oil impacted it. These, uh, this box of chicken and biscuit crackers, delicious, by the way. I did not manufacture them. Oil was used, gasoline was used to ship them to the store in which I drove to pick them up. AirPods, definitely didn't manufacture those. Water bottle, this, uh, <laughs> biscuits and, uh, what I probably can't say here on YouTube, from, uh, the Outer Banks, North Carolina, this cup here, great coffee cup, well, I didn't make that. I didn't make the Elon book. I didn't make this plant. Okay? So y y you get my point. Everything is tied to oil, to gasoline in some way, shape, or form. And prices going up for those things can lead to a lot more inflation, not just on the headline, but also on your core metrics of evaluating inflation, which do technically strip out energy, which is gas, oil, as well as food. So yeah, this could be wildly negative for the economy and for inflation. Now, why would I sit here and say the Fed could actually be in a better position to cut rates? It seems like, just reading the tea leaves here, that Jerome Powell is basically begging for a reason to cut rates at this point. They are begging for a reason to cut rates. And they're starting to get a lot more uh, backlash from their overseers in Washington to start cutting rates as well. I mean, the federal funds rate has worked very well in restricting the economy or economic activity in the areas it works well on, like lending, right? Homes, cars, personal loans, all of that is down. JP Morgan just said on Friday that they expect lending will continue to slow down. And that's why JP Morgan's stock was down over 5% on Friday. And it was basically the same across the board for other banks. Long story short, the Fed is begging for a reason to start cutting rates. This could be just the reason that they have been waiting for. Because what tends to happen before you actually go into a recession event, if you take a look at the chart of oil, Oil does tend to spike before recession events. I, I know I know a lot of you guys remember this. Most of you guys should. Uh, 2007 through 2008, what happened to oil? Oil went parabolic. And then what proceeded in the economy? The economy fell big time. That was when oil went from roughly where you are today in uh, January of 2000, 2007, around $85 a barrel up to the high in January of 2009 at about $140. Everything came crashing down, economically speaking, during that time. You could argue a lot of that pain was kickstarted by energy markets. I vivid, I wasn't driving at the time. I was, what, uh, 11 years old, 10 years old during this? But I remember my mom saying, hey, walk to the store. I'm not driving you. Oil's $5 a gallon, and in inflation-adjusted terms, let's be honest, true inflation, that would be like gas at 9 or $10 a gallon today. Now, do I think that's going to happen? Probably not. That would be like the worst, worst-case scenario. But I could imagine a scenario where gas gets back up to 5 6 $7 a gallon again, and that would have a huge negative impact to the economy. That would be the reason why the Fed would be cutting rates, and they would really disregard the inflation data that we would be getting. That's a very real possibility. In that scenario... I could see the markets falling 20 to 30% from here. I mean, if you take a look on a technical basis, what we've seen on Friday, you did see a quarter percent decline in after hours as well on Friday. Uh, NASDAQ dropping from 438.27 to close the day, down about 1.6%, and after hours dropping another dollar ten cents down to $437.17. You did what looks like a uh, break under your 50-day moving average on Friday as well. You broke under that. So you closed under your 50-day moving average for the first time since dun, 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 back here on November 2nd, 2023. So just looking at this abstractly from that point, your next kind of movement down here could be down to about 420 on the triple Qs, which would be the 100-day moving average. Now, considering that, that would be a drop of about 3.84%. It's possible that happens on Monday. It's possible that happens over the next couple of trading days. And then beyond there, if the markets were to fall, let's say 15%, if this did turn into a bad scenario, that would put the, the markets 
the Nasdaq down to about 375. And then uh, odds are, odds are, I think you could fall even more than that. If recession fears come about, if if corporate earnings really come into question, which they kind of did upon the bank earnings on Friday, you could imagine a scenario where markets could head back down into the 300s for the Nat for the Nasdaq for the triple Qs, maybe down to like 320, right? And from here, that would represent downside because let's be honest, the only bull thesis left in our markets today is uh, uh, people are going to spend money. Right. And if gas is eating up their money to spend, that's a problem. Uh, and, and let alone go into a recession. That's not on anyone's radar right now. But gas, if gas does continue to spike and even spike further. Yeah, a recession could definitely be on the table here. Uh, and to fall back down to 320 on the triple Qs, that would be downside of about twenty six and a half percent. Now, we'll see. Maybe there's no tit for tat with this Middle East situation. Maybe business goes back to usual. Maybe, you know, uh, this doesn't escalate into a full on war, but that is where it's starting to look. It, it, it doesn't seem likely to me Israel's just going to be attacked and not do anything. It also looks like Iran's not going to be attacked and not do anything in which Israel did fire the first shot here. Um, semantics. Who cares? Neither here or there. It happened. It's likely going to happen. And these are the consequences to that. Likely the Fed can start to cut rates, let's be honest as well, geopolitically, uh, well, politically tensioned, are uh, uh, definitely starting to ratchet up for Powell. And it, let, let's be honest, if there's a recession catalyst like the price of energy rising, you're going to see a lot more political pressure on Jerome Powell to start cutting rates as quickly as possible. And that's likely what's going to happen. The Fed has a lot of room to start cutting rates, even with inflation uh, being where it is. If you look at year over year changes of inflation at, let's say, 2.8 percent for core, C core PCE with, uh, you know, the federal funds rate at five and a quarter percent, the Fed could really cut basis points like eight times, cut rates eight times, and you would still be higher than the rate of inflation on your core PCE. So, uh, yeah, Maybe that turns into a positive for the markets eventually, rates being lowered, but initially the Fed cutting rates, it's not going to be seen as good. This Middle East situation, not going to be seen as good, especially for the impacts of oil. And that's what matters. If oil is impacted, that's what matters. As far as conflicts, people bombing each other, the markets are not going to care much about that specifically. Let me know what you think about this information down below in the comment section. Uh, this could get brutal. This could get rough. This could get bloody quickly. So let me know what you think down below in the comment section. Thank you for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you in the next one.